So hello and welcome you all to Sail to MDS Daniel Academy. So today we are here with the part 5 of NEED MDS 2020 paper discussion along with questions we are going to deal few important concepts also. So as per if you have not watched part 1 to part 4 you can watch back clicking on i button above and the link is also given in description box. So let's see the first case report. So patient is there with a mild swelling in front of ear since one month and this swelling is a painful and most often the size varies during the daytime and increases when he eats food. So when USG has been done for such swelling it reveals a large stone at hilum of parotid gland. So which is the most reliable treatment in this condition. It is superficial parotid ectomy. So as per what's the difference between the partial and superficial parotid ectomy? In partial, we go for the resection of parotid pathology with a margin of normal parotid tissue. Most often it is done in case of benign pathology and low grade malignancy. In superficial parotid ectomy, resection of the entire superficial lobe of parotid is done, usually used for metastasis to parotid lymph node example from the skin cancer or from the high grade malignant parotid tumors then question number 82 a patient is diagnosed with a lymphoproliferative disorder the serum analysis shows monoclonal spike in serum and urine so it is indicative of multiple myeloma so as well let us understand the difference between the healthy bone marrow and bone marrow in multiple myeloma in healthy bone marrow the white blood cells in presence of antigen will be converted into plasma cell but whenever there is a bone marrow in multiple myeloma dna damage occurs so we have a damaged white blood cells so because of that the multiple myeloma cell happens and there will be increase in m proteins the young rh negative girl reports the sign of passing dark colored urine and clay colored stool since last few days on examination, she has yellow sclera. So, what's the diagnosis? It is viral hepatitis. Then, a trapezoidal tooth anatomy with a symmetrical mesial and distal halves when seen from the labial and occlusal aspect. So, it depicts the characteristic of mandibular central incisors. Then, a field examination using tongue depressor and illumination is classified as type 4. ADA examination. So as per let us understand the difference between type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4 ADA. So type 1 is a complete examination using mouth mirror, explorer, good illumination, full mouth radiographs and additional diagnostic method. In type 2 we have a limited examination. In type 3 this pen is done using mouth mirror and explorer using good illumination. And type 4 is a screening procedure by using tongue depressor and whatever available illumination. Then a question is there that is a trapezoidal anatomy of tooth with the shortest uneven outline towards the occlusal surface. So it depicts the proximal aspect of maxillary molar. Then a graphic plot of change in pH of saliva after a glucose rinse when plotted against time. So this graph is Stephen curve. Then a patient report with a sudden complete loss of vision on the left side field of both the eyes. So what is the site of lesion? It is right optic tract. Now as parents, we are going to understand the other possibility of damage to the visual field. So this black will indicate the visual field lost. So if one eye or one optic nerve is damaged, vision is lost only on the affected side. If the visual pathway after the optic chiasma are damaged, one side of the visual field in both eyes is lost and this disorder is known as hemionopia and may result from a stroke or tumor that damages one side of the brain. And if the optic chiasma is damaged, the outer part of the visual field in both eyes is lost. So as well, please try to remember these three conditions of the damage to your vision. Then when two surfaces slide over each other in intimate relation, contact occurs only at certain point and these points are known as aspirates. A teacher gives a student data of 10 patients with a lung disorder. So the following finding will indicate restrictive lung disease. It is reduced total lung capacity. Then a scope technique is used to cap the needle after injection. Remember, this is the right way to recapping the needle. 
two hands should not be used, only one hand should be used. Then Sheldon, Cat Pow and Langenbeck are used for what purpose? They are used to retract soft tissue. We are going to see important image based question here. So this is the Langenbeck retractor. This is a Kral retractor. This one is Ovisger Ramus retractor. And this is the Sheldon retractor. Then titanium welding is done using which technique? By using laser welding. Which of the following is the most radiopaque? Trabecular bone, hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage or cortical bone? It is cortical bone which is most radiopaque. Then a junior anesthetist accidentally inject a parasympathetic drug in a patient. So what will happen? You can see meiosis in such patient. When anchor teeth have the same anchor value as teeth to be moved, the type of anchorage is known as reciprocal anchorage. Then aspirin, where you can found Purkinje cells. Remember, Purkinje cells are found only in cerebellum. And there is a drug known as raloxifene. It is used in treatment of postmenopausal osteoporosis. Remember, it is a drug used to prevent and treat osteoporosis in post menopausal women and those on glucocorticoids. Remember aspirin there is osteoporosis normally this drug is less preferred than biphosphonate and you can use this drug to reduce the risk of breast cancer in those at high risk. Then xerostomy aspirin you can see in all conditions like old age, Chagrin syndrome and diabetes except hypertensive condition. So what the intensifying screen do? They convert X-ray radiation into visible light. So experience that was from the part 5. If you want latest need papers or last minute revision points, you can contact me. And from 20 December, we are starting with the new batch. If you want to attend for the demo lecture, for that also you can contact me. Till then, experience, keep working hard. Very few days are left for examination. You should keep on doing the work. Remember, you should read the important notes, past papers, and don't try to go for the new things. And any doubt, any problem you have, you can contact me. I am there for you. Till then, aspirant, all the best. See you tomorrow with the part 6.